Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for February 25th, 2022. Well, guys, I want to apologize. There was a video yesterday, and I got to tell you, it was probably one of the better ones I've ever done. <laughs> but there was a, a problem on YouTube yesterday. Um, the entire day, it was the the video was running. Uh, it was stuck in the YouTube um, purgatory, I guess, is that it was uh, just couldn't, it, it uploaded very quickly, but it wouldn't finish. And so I apologize. I don't know what the problem is and why it didn't um, finish yesterday. But I do think YouTube was slammed yesterday with all the live feeds and everything from Ukraine um, area that was creating some backlogs or problems. So this morning, I am actually recording this video just a little bit earlier than normal. And what I want to do is try and get that out uh, this morning and hopefully this one will load. So I apologize yesterday, there was no video. This morning what I'm going to do to um, increase the speed of getting this out, there will be no blog today to uh, try and get this one loaded up this morning so you guys will have it. So with that said, let's settle in, let's buckle up, let's get ready for the Friday edition to the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. Obviously, this is a rather somber um, market situation right now with the attack um, of Russia on Ukraine. Yesterday, we had quite a day. Um, it, was, it was really amazing, gapping down substantially on the shock of the event and then deciding that everything was a buy for some reason yesterday. So let's take a look at these charts and see if we can gain some information about how we might want to approach the market for today. So first off, let's take a look right here in our Dow. Obviously, this is a really, really big comeback yesterday in that candle where we gapped down substantially and then the buyers just rushed back in but unfortunately guys really nothing has changed here in the chart um, if we take a look um, this rally back up all we really did was push right back up into price resistance here on the chart now I guess the real question is can we follow through today um, to the upside because I want you to notice that we still have tremendous levels of resistance above in this chart and we still have a substantial uh, downtrend underway in the chart. So we made lower highs and we followed that with lower lows. And any rally back up into these substantial resistance areas, we're still in a downtrend. So I would really caution you to be kind of careful um, as we rush back up. Remember, being a Friday going into a weekend with this, uh, this going on, um, the attack in Kiev has, has started to occur over there last night. And so pretty ugly situation overall. So let's take a look here and um, just be really careful and cautious as we approach this. And one of the reasons I say that is just imagine the possibility that we push all the way back down heading into this weekend to test that low. That's going to make for a very big stop loss in your trading and a high risk situation for the market. So, uh, for, for your personal accounts. So watch that carefully as we slide into this weekend. That uncertainty heading into the weekend could be um, a problem. We also have some data this morning that could be pretty interesting uh, for the market to digest, but we'll get there in just a second. Let's take a look at um, our technicals here in the chart and let's notice that we still have a very, very dismal look at the technicals. As you can see, we have that major downtrend underway, strong resistance levels above, 34 EMA crossing down through the 200 day here and that 50 is coming down fast. As a matter of fact, uh, probably sometime next week, our 50 day moving average could cross down through that 200 day moving average and what we're doing is just creating a unbelievably strong um, resistance level 
uh, right through here. So even if we recover a bunch, I'm not sure we're out of the woods yet here on the index uh, or the diamonds index. Let's take a look at the SPY. SPY is just a little bit stronger, um, but notice right here, we still have tremendous levels of resistance above. And if we can get through this one with the follow through today, just note that we still have lots of major resistance levels above before we can really say that there's a recovery underway here in the market. So looking at that and then just realizing that we continue in this substantial downtrend, there's a lot of uncertainty here and we'll want to watch these areas closely because if we do, if we do rally back up into here and if we do push up this far in the market, just notice we're going to run into kind of some double double whammy of major price resistance and downtrend and that possibility that we could fail here um, certainly is high. And then if we look at um, our index um, technicals here, notice that the 34 EMA will be crossing down through that 200 day here this morning. Um, and that 50 day is dropping pretty, pretty sharply. So if you look right through there, once again, we just have a massive level of price resistance setting up in the chart, which could be problematic if we do uh, continue to rally and follow through that big candle yesterday. Now, if we take a look at the QQQ, QQQ is pretty darn weak. And although it had a, an amazing bounce yesterday, um, I'm not sure we're out of the woods here. Notice we pushed right back up into that resistance level in the chart, but our bigger level of price resistance is just above right in here. And if we take a look at the downtrend here in this chart, um, we've got a lot of work yet to do before we resolve these issues. So if we can follow through, and that would be wonderful if we could, let's watch this resistance level right here and then certainly watch that resistance level above. Um, we're going to need to break these downtrends and break these resistance levels to really sound the all clear. That may be difficult going into this weekend, so be very, very careful. Now let's take a look at our technicals. Certainly our technicals here are extremely bearish. We came very, very close to testing the 500 day moving average here in the chart. And I still wouldn't rule out the possibility that we could yet test that with this conflict kind of expanding over there. So let's take a look and see what we've got here. Our 34 EMA crossing down through the 200. Our 50 day moving average will be crossing down through the 200. If not today, um, early next week. And um, that constitutes the death cross in the NASDAQ. So let's watch that close. This area of resistance up here will take an awful lot of effort to get up through. Um, and I'm not sure we're going to have the inspiration to do that, considering that we're heading into next month where the Fed is going to start cutting um, um, capital to the markets and um, also going to um, probably raise interest rates. Now they may change their attitude here and not go um, as aggressive with all of this going on, but I'm pretty sure they're probably going to continue to raise those rates. So you'll want to watch that closely as we approach these levels. Follow through could be possible. Mm, but boy, heading into this weekend, it might be a little bit tough to really inspire those bulls. Now let's take a look at our um, IWM. Now Russell had a good response yesterday back up just like all the other indexes. And what's interesting about this chart, I'm going to pull this back and show you that we really kind of made a double bottom here in um, IWM. But unfortunately, we still have um, a substantial downtrend here in the chart. And if we were to rally back up, just notice that we've got substantial levels of price resistance in this chart right through here and right through here. And if we can get through all of that mess, we just have a phenomenal level of price resistance right here in the chart. So kind of keep in mind rallying back up into this area could be that double whammy of resistance if we can get back up there. Um, so um, just watch that carefully. Our technicals in IWM continue to be really ugly. Notice that we fell through the 500 day moving average yesterday, um, but that created that bounce in here. But notice our 
are 34 EMA, 20, 20 EMA is below the 30 EMA, 34 EMA is below the 50 simple, and 50 is well below the 200 day. And that just creates this massive level of price resistance in this chart for the rally back. So um, I don't think we can um, even come close to saying the all clear has been sounded here in the Russell. Let's take a look at the VIX. Now the VIX had an interesting day yesterday where we gapped up really high. We popped into some, well here, we popped up into some price resistance here in the chart and um, ended up pulling back. You can see there's other price resistance out here. Ended up pulling back on the day as we rallied, rallied, rallied um, here in the market. Now what you want to do is you want to take a look um, in our trend. We still have that upside trend going on and although this pullback was wonderful, um, yesterday, relieving some of that uh, fear in the chart. I want you to notice that we're still maintaining that upside trend and we still have this 25 handle area in the chart as price support as well as this 28 um, area in the chart as some price support. So if we can follow, continue to follow through and relieve some of this pressure, just keep in mind we could use any of these areas in consolidation um, um, to just find that next wave back to the upside here in the VIX. So although we pulled back a 30 VIX is certainly um, a complication here for the market. And if you're an option trader, what that's going to say is very, very expensive options, um, wide bid ask spreads, costly time value in those options. So be really, really careful. Let's take a look at our um, T21. 22. Now our T2122 indicator um, yesterday on the gap down, we were down here in this bearish reversal zone. And you can see that big rally yesterday brought us right back up. Now, if we can follow through today, if we can find inspiration in something today, bullishness, uh, for bullishness, then we certainly have opened quite the upside opportunity here in T2122. Um, let's keep in mind that big bounce yesterday also opens um, a pretty substantial opportunity, painful opportunity, if we were to go back down and retest those lows and get back down here into that bearish reversal zone um, over the weekend. So, or excuse me, bullish reversal zone over the weekend so watch that closely now i certainly wouldn't want to predict either way because i don't think anybody knows exactly what's going to happen here but we'll just want to be really careful and cautious as we approach um, the day then let's take a look at our t2108 now t2108 had a pretty nice recovery by the end of the day um, Early in the day, we were down here testing these lows and even breaking those lows. But let's keep in mind that we still, at the end of the day, even with that rally that we had at the end of the day, um, we only have 24% of our stocks that are above their 40-day moving average. That's certainly not a bullish situation in the market. It is still a very uh, pretty substantially oversold condition, as a matter of fact. And unfortunately, I don't think the pressures are off of this. Now, if we can continue to follow through to the upside, we'll want to watch and notice that we have these substantial resistance levels above to move on through. Um, and who knows, maybe it's possible, but I think it's also possible heading into the weekend that we um, have that chance of faltering here. Our T2107, very much the same. Um, T2107, only 26% of our stocks holding above the 200-day moving average, even after that big bounce yesterday to the upside. So it was more of an oversold bounce. And I think more than in, more than true buying, I think it was a short covering rally where um, we had a lot of short traders that just you know, on the big gap down, took their profits and, and covered their short positions um, overall. And that created a substantial rally in the market, more than I think that there was really a lot of buying going on. If you take a look right in here, we have substantial resistance levels above. Um, in this chart, we have um, a phenomenal downtrend underway. So even if we can really follow through to the upside, then we still have a lot of work here before we really can call this a bullish chart. 
Our T2101, I've been saying that T2101 seemed to be setting up for a big move. Now, I didn't know it was going to be because of um, an attack by Russia, but as you can see right in here, we had a pretty substantial bounce here in T2101, and we've pushed right back up here into this level of resistance in T2101. So what I'm curious to see is if that um, activity continues today, bullish to the upside, if it actually follows through up here, or if we might see that actually turning lower with kind of a lackluster um, response today and follow through because of the uncertainty of the weekend. Who knows, but let's watch that close. Our um, economic calendar today is going to um, also have quite a bit to say about how the market responds. Now, yesterday um, I um, was talking about some substantial concerns here about the GDP number coming in as strong as they had it listed, but it ended up doing that. It ended up coming in at 7%. Now remember the GDP is a very lagging number. Um, so that possibility that um, um, the one coming uh, this next time might not be so good, but we'll wanna watch that closely. And then jobless claims actually came in a um, little better than expected, but with a big seasonal adjustment. So you'll want to keep an eye on those. Housing numbers came in a little bit less than expected in that um, in that move. Um, um, so we we're starting to see that little bit of stress on the housing um, industry with mortgage applications having dropped so dramatically. But this morning, let's take a look. What do we have? Well, this morning before the bell, we're going to have GDP, durable goods numbers. And right now, the consensus, um, honestly, um, sometimes I wonder about these consensus um, estimates with uh, seeing all of the pressures that consumers are facing. But notice that we had... Um, um, negative numbers that came in last um, last time and they're looking for a 0.5 so an increase uh, still a very low um, durable goods number but they're looking for that 0.5 uh, to come in and we'll want to watch that pretty closely because if that were to miss that could add to a little bit of bearish pressure and there might be reason to suggest that that's the case just because we have such a pressured uh, market situation um, our personal incomes and outlays will also be very very interesting today and personal incomes have been declining and unfortunately the consensus is actually looking for them to um, decline more and so you can see there um, the consensus is looking for personal income to come in at a negative 0.3 and they're looking at the core pce increasing to 5.2 percent which certainly is not a good situation uh, for the consumers out there so watch that one closely as well could be uh, those two could be fairly market moving events then we have consumer sentiment consumer sentiment is already at an extreme low level here and um, if that were to continue to fall, that could be a problem. And then, of course, pending home sales, um, well, that ticked higher last time. So perhaps that can follow through here to the upside. But again, if we start seeing those misses here on some of those reports, that could be problematic for those bulls, particularly heading into this weekend. Then let's take a look at our earnings calendar. Now, our earnings calendar, um, we we have a break and we're really going to start winding down um, earnings now since there's no blog this morning if you guys want to take a screenshot of this these are the notables that i have uh, for today so pause the video take a screenshot and um, let's go through a couple of these really really quick we're going to have um, aes uh, reporting today so we've got some utilities in there uh, c and k will be reporting um, today we've got Foot Locker. Maybe one of the more notables here this morning would be Foot Locker, and you can see it's having some trouble here on its report. Um, I am GM, uh, GN, I mean, um, if you like biotech, biotech, this little guy will be reporting today. Um, might want to keep an eye on that. Um, NOG, um, oil and gas, um, STWD will be in there and also VST. So there's a few in here that we'll be reporting. And by the way, none of these will really will be reporting in the after the bell. They'll all be 
uh, pre-market reports here. So watch those close. Then let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up. But before we do that, guys, if you can do me a quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful and helpful, please do me a favor and also click that thumbs up button and leave a brief comment. And once again, I want to apologize that there was no video yesterday. It was completely out of my control. It was just stuck in YouTube forever. So I do apologize for that. And thanks for everyone. I got a lot of comments wondering if everything was okay. Um, and I, you guys are just awesome. I truly, truly appreciate it. So let's take a look at a couple places where you might find um, a marginal bit of safety here in the market. First, um, if we take a look at the Spider Select sector ETFs, one of the things that I always follow is a trend where we hold the 34 EMA um, in a upside trend for 20 days. Um, unfortunately, we only have two. Um, in the entire spider select sector and it's been that way for some time XLE is holding above and we know energy prices are very very strong um, if you've gone to the pump recently um, average uh, gasoline price across the United States was announced today at uh, three dollars and fifty three cents it's up twenty four cents in the month so as this um, complication continues to go on between complication war uh, continues to go on between the Ukrainians and Russia um, obviously there is um, substantial possibility that oil prices continue to surge to the upside um, now what's interesting yesterday is we had jumped up to hundred and four dollars a barrel and this morning Brent crude is trading at about 98.61 so it's come back quite a bit but oil and gas continues to stay pretty darn strong here um, and may continue to show upside so watch some of those um, oil sector stocks uh, natural gas would be another place pretty strong and then um, the only other other area of the spider select sectors holding that 20-day trend is in the oil expiration area XOP so keep an eye on that that's holding up in here it hasn't really been all that bullish but watch that carefully as a matter of fact I use an indicator called the volatility stop um, you guys um, if you haven't seen the videos on the volatility stop you might want to check that out but if um, if I measure all of the spider select sectors by um, those above their volatility stop um, we only have two again of the entire spider select sectors and that's um, the energy sector and the exploration sector in the market so there's a couple places that you might look for a little um, support um, also I think it would be a good idea to keep an eye on gold and silver now gold and silver had a big pop-up yesterday and a substantial pullback as the market just kind of threw up its hands and said we don't care for some reason um, in some wild volatility but you can see that we're we've broken out above some resistance levels in the chart and if we can kind of hold this up here I do think this sets up an opportunity for more upside in gold obviously there's a lot of uncertainty out there um, in the market so watch that close and if we take a look at silver silver also had that big pop yesterday and we've broken through some resistance in the chart so once again let's see if we can get a little resting pullback a little consolidation in here that may set up that opportunity in gold and silver other places that you might uh, want to look is you know some of those normal safety places that you would find um, around um, the market you know something in um, in uh, consumer staples something um, in those consumer defensive areas may also hold up pretty well and then anything anything in the food production um, area of the market has been really really strong take a look at CF Industries CF popping up gapping through some resistance here um, with some upside moves so you'll want to keep an eye on that well also you might want to take a look at Mosaic uh, Mosaic was looking really good yesterday popped up strong but pulled back with um, that market 
uh, wild gyrations yesterday for for certain but watch that closely um, a lot of these food production farm related ag related stocks uh, commodity um, related socks take a look at um, uh, dbc dbc has been in a phenomenal upside trend big pop and drop yesterday but notice we're trying to move right back up here today on that um, commodity sector so food prices are continuing to be under pressure energy prices continuing to be under pressure consumers are certainly under uh, pressure in the market um, with these rising costs and um, we're starting to see that consumer be a little bit strained here in the market. So um, be kind of careful because we know these numbers continuing to move up is not helping the situation of inflation. Kind of the perfect storm here for the Federal Reserve and how they manage this is going to be really interesting. So with that, guys, I want to wish you all a fantastic day and thanks so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. I, I want you to know that um, um, it's obviously a painful um, painful market for a lot of folks and I get that um, I really really do but um, at the same time there are a lot of us making really nice money in this market as um, this volatility has provided some really good opportunities so hopefully you're on that side of the fence making some pretty good money but if you're not I really want to su suggest to you as we head into this weekend the better part of valor may be to run away scared and live to fight another day. And what I mean by that, put your hands in your pockets, um, shut your computer off, go do something else rather than fight a market with this kind of volatility, protecting that capital going into the weekend. Now, I know for me, very highly possible I'll take some profits today, but um, also, um, very possible that I might not make a single trade um, entry trade today. I don't, I'm not going to predict that just because I always wait to see the price action, but um, I might not make any position trade today at all because of that uncertainty heading into this weekend. So with that, everyone, this video is a little bit longer. I do apologize, but I do truly want to wish you all the best. Be safe, be happy, be careful, and we'll see you right back here bright and early Monday morning. Uh, I wish you all the best.